man in the moon, as I gaze out upon the sprawling expanse at his pyramid corners, I see the shimmering city lights, all five of them. But if I close my eyes to just a sliver, the lights multiply as my vision blurs. I imagine that I'm walking down the Champs Elysees in Paris, France, strolling arm in arm with my boyfriend, Jean Pierre, who whispers my name, or some better sounding name than mine, like Bergenet de Montpesson or Juliette de Pardieu. Then I blink, and I'm once again Dorothy Jane Torkelson from Pyramid Corners, Oklahoma, the dream capital of the world. But I cling to the hope that all of this is about to change. For I am an entrant in the high school foreign exchange competition to Paris. And tomorrow the finalists will be announced. I doubt if I will sleep tonight as I am overwhelmed with visions of Jean-Pierre gazing into my eyes as we sit at a sidewalk cafe and sip little bitty cups of coffee. Je t'aime, Jean-Pierre. Je t'aime, Virginie. You are a nutbag in every language. English, nutbag. French, nut bagage. <laughs> People say God looks out for the working man. Sure hope he's looking out for me. These empty pockets need a helping hand. Kitchen tables full of family. But then the sun comes up, and the moon is shining big and bright. And the new day promises that everything will be all right. And the new Boy, I hope so. <laughs> I mean that in the nicest way. I cannot stay in the suspense. Well, no one's called yet, but I'm sure they'll be calling soon. Unless I'm not even a finalist, in which case they wouldn't call. And I will languish in despair in my room and never come out for the rest of my pitiful existence. Either way, I can't lose. Mama! Ruth Ann, stop torturing your sister. But she's so easy. <laughs> Dr. James, I learned this song for you if you get to go to France. Alouette, gentil, alouette. Alouette, gentil plumeray. <laughs> well, thank you, Mary Sue, but what if I don't get to go to France? Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. Mama, do you think I have a chance? I mean, do you think I could really get to go? Well, Dorothy Jane, you're a good student, and I personally feel you'd be a wonderful representative, but I don't want to get your hopes up. I'll get him up. Okay. You've got at least as good a chance as anybody else. Get him up higher. Bye, sweetheart. Bring us back some cheese. Oh, if you live your whole life and everything you want comes down to a single moment. Waiting for a single phone call. And the moment could be here. Any moment. Ring! I'm not going anywhere. What a devastating blow to me. <laughs> this is it. This is my whole life. You gonna pick up the phone? I'm scared. <laughs> Hello? No, this is Ruth Ann. Who's this? Wait a minute, I'll check. Are you here for Ms. Addington from the Foreign Exchange Selection Committee? <laughs> She's in the bathroom. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is Dorothy Jane. Hi. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. It's okay, sweetie. You'll have other chances. It's me. I'm one of the three finalists. I am in there! <laughs> Yay! I'm going to Paris and my dreams can take flight. <laughs> 
Dorothy Jing. This is your mother from Ground Control. There's still two other finalists. Let us not count our poulets before they are hatched. America, America. I said it's I will win. I am going to Paris. My grades are excellent, my social skills are refined, and I want out of this town more than anybody. And I want you out. And the final determining factor is a one-on-one -on -one interview with the selection committee. And I will charm them. Sure you will, honey. Just don't make that face. I'm so happy. I can't wait to tell everybody. I'm going to Paris. Not bagage. <laughs> J'ai faim, I have hunger. J'ai soif, I have thirst. Je m'appelle, I am called, Bergenet de Montpesson. You know, Dorothy Jane, I say this not in an attempt to rain on your parade, but you are still one of three candidates. Here's your competition, Dorothy Jane. I want the fun day, la patrie, da 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 da, that's all I know. For sure, Mademoiselle Dorothy Jane. Don't you ever do that again. Dorothy Jane? But it's European. It's continental. It's the way of the French finalist. Kirby Scroggins? Absolutely. <laughs> really? Oh, that's wonderful news, Kirby. I'm so happy for you. Father Kirby Scroggins is my competition. Congratulations, Kirby. Dorothy Jane, that is a true sign of sportsmanship, and I am proud of you. No way am I going to lose to Kirby Scroggins. <laughs> I knew she was going to say that. She's just a little bit competitive. That's all right, Mrs. Thorkelson. I accept the challenge. And may the best finalist win. You touch me again, I'll hurt you. That kind of rejection would have crushed the old Kirby Scroggins. But when I get back from France, I'm going to be the new Kirby Scroggins. Kirby Scroggins. Debonair, bon vivant, citizen of the world. And when I get back from Paris, you're gonna want me. Oh, puke. You're not going to Paris. You're gonna choose somebody sophisticated. That's my sister. Somebody poised. That's my sister. They're gonna choose Dream of Donathan. Hello, Dorothy Jane. Hello, Kirby. Hi. Hi. I just learned that you both made finalists. And I wanted to tell you congratulations. They're gonna send my sister to Paris because she's sophisticated and poised. And I'm the other finalist. You're dead. <laughs> you know I've never been outside Oklahoma. I'm sorry? My entire universe exists within the intersection of State Highway 25 and Farm Route 2. And the idea of sending my daughter halfway around the world to live with strangers and eat snails is deeply unsettling. You don't want Dorothy Jane to go to Paris? Oh, I think it will be very nice for her to go to Paris. Paris will expand her horizons and give her culture and sophistication, all the things she dreams of. And then at the end of the semester, They'll send her back to Pyramid Corners, Oklahoma. And... How are you going to keep them down on the farm after they've seen Perry? Uh-huh. Of course, I don't even know why I'm worried about when she comes back. I don't know if I can even get her there. Doesn't the school pay for the trip? Yeah, but she's going to have expenses. And I can't send her across the ocean with no money in her pocket. Then why did you let her apply? Oh, because... She... She talks about Paris like Paris is heaven. And now she actually has a chance to go to heaven? What kind of mother would I be to say no? You know, I almost got to Paris once myself, Mrs. Torkelson. You did? 1944. Got as far as a little town called Cherbourg. Me and a bunch of guys I didn't know. And a bunch of other guys I didn't know trying to kill us. I bet your mother didn't want you to go either. <laughs> well, it was anything but heaven, I can tell you that. I remember the tanks and the mortar fire, and at night, the whole city lit up bright with the explosions. But the one thing I kept thinking, besides, please, God, don't let me die, was that this was some beautiful country we were blowing up. 
And I promised myself that someday I would come back there and enjoy its beauty. I regret that I never did that. So you think I should let her go? Oh, that's not for me to say. You just never know if a chance like this is going to come around again. Thank you. My name's Leonard Wheeler. I was just driving by, and I couldn't help but notice your house. Oh, if you're here to sell me something, I'm sure I can't afford it. And anyway, all my kids are sick. Thank you. No, no, actually, Wait, I'm an antique dealer. I'm here to buy. Oh. Well, come on in. My name's Millicent Torkelson. Ooh, you're here all the way from New York City? Yes, I specialize in the unusual. And in looking around, perhaps I've stumbled onto something here. Well, perhaps you have, but all our stuff has been collected through many generations of Torkelsons. And it would be like selling off the family heritage to let any of these things go. I understand how you feel, Mrs. Torkelson. And that's why I come all the way out to places like this, because people take such good care of these family treasures. Well, like that, that 1880s clawfoot sofa, for one. That is exactly what I'm looking for. I mean, that is a lovely example of Victorian oversized opulence. Oh, well, I really don't know about that. Yeah, well, I do. And that's why I'm prepared to pay a very fair price. And everybody can use a little extra money. Oh, well, not us. <laughs> well, would you at least think about it? I pay cash. Look, I'll come back later in the week, and if you've had a change of heart, I'll take a closer look at some of your charming objets d'art. Well, I'll think about it, Mr. Wheeler. Yeah, and you think about that sofa. Have a nice day. Okay. Can't wash the mud pot pans in the sink, Mary Sue. Now it's all stopped up and full of rocks and mud. I was making Frank's souffle for you. <laughs> you were supposed to be watching her. Boy. Take your eyes off the kid for one second. Mikey <laughs> Jane, look who came to see me. Dream of Jonathan, what are you doing here? Don't leave. I want to show you what I can do. Be careful. Dorothy Jane's in a real bad mood. And she might make you cry. <laughs> Sorry, Mary Sue. I didn't mean to make you cry. Too late. You've had it. <laughs> Gee, I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time, Dorothy Jane. Bad time here at my house? No such thing. In that case, you'll be happy to hear the most interesting news. What? This year, the school has decided to have family interviews at the homes of the three finalists. They want to come here and meet my family? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Wait a minute. I get this right. Whether or not I go to Paris hinges on the impression my family makes? That's right. My mother's already planning a little soiree in their honor. Kirby, of course, is having a fish fry. Trey, American. We. Oui. So, do you think your family will plan anything special, Dorothy Jane? We. Oui. Hey, Gina, bet you didn't even know I could play the fiddle. <laughs> Here's the deal. You're going to take everybody to Frosty King and you're going to keep them there for the next hour and a half. And then you're going to call and see if the home review committee has left yet. And why should I do this for you? Because you're the second oldest Stephen Floyd. And if I go to Paris, that'll make you the oldest. And you'll get to be in charge of everybody. The power is unbelievable. Oh, who do you think you're talking to? Okay, okay, here's five bucks. <laughs> Come on, little ones, we're going to Frosty King. All, All right. right, yeah. You going to go with us, Frosty Jane? Um, 
I can't go right now, but you just going over there to Frosty King and stay as long as you want. We got busted. I believe we have VIP interview guests arriving momentarily, and nobody is going anywhere. We are going to be here in full support of our candidate. Now, everybody go clean up. Oh, come on. Move, move. You know, Dorothy Jane, I'm really very hurt. Hurt? Why? You didn't offer to send me down to the Frosty King for any ice cream, or... Maybe you were planning on shipping me off to a movie or maybe just locking me up in the closet. Mama. You know, I have this terrible feeling that what you're trying to do is unload your dear Torkelson clan before the Home Review Committee gets here because you're afraid we might spoil your chances of going to Paris. Spoil my chances? Because you're embarrassed by us. Embarrassed? How could you... I would never... I'll go start laying out the buffet. Man in the moon, I'm a guilty little crumb. I've done a terrible thing, and I feel awful because I love my family. But deep down in my heart, I also know that they're going to embarrass me. I mean, I can love them and still be honest, can't I? But let's face it. I'm not going to Paris, and my aspirations are going to splatter like a bug on the windshield of life. Dorothy Jane, I want to know how come I make you embarrassed. Mama told you that? I heard you talking. Chucky Lee, I love you. You know I love you. You're off the subject. I want to go to Paris. Why? What's Paris got that Pyramid Corners hasn't got? The Champs-Élysées, the Louvre, the Arc de Triomphe. We don't have those? No. <laughs> then we don't need those, because we got Frosty King. And I think you should be proud of where you come from. Oklahoma, the land of Will Rogers and Oklahoma Sooners football, with more horses per capita than any other state of the Union. I thought that was Texas. Well, you're wrong, Dorothy Jane. You're wrong about a lot of things. Okay, L A. Oklahoma's okay. Chucky lady. The house looks real nice, Mama. Thank you, Dorothy Jane. Mama. What? I'm sorry. For what? For putting myself first and hurting everybody's feelings. You feel bad about that? I feel so bad that when the Home Review Committee gets here, I'm going to tell them I don't deserve to go to France and I'm going to ask them to pull my name out of consideration. You don't have to do that. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'll get the tea. You get the door. coming later? Others? Oh, then it's only you. Please come in. And I'm Dorothy Jane. <laughs> Would you care for some food or drink? No, no, no. I'll just get down to business if that's all right. Oh, that'd be fine. Please have a seat. Mother, look who's here. Oh, hey! Hello. So... As regards this little beauty... Yes, well, after careful consideration, I'm afraid we're just not interested. Mother, I thought you realized I was being insincere. Well, would you at least let me make an offer? Make her an offer. I went through my records, and I checked up on this gorgeous little piece over here, and I just want to say that if we can agree on terms, I'll throw her in the back of the truck right now. Look, I thought I was going Air France. <laughs> Dorothy Jane, this is Mr. Wheeler. He's an antique dealer from New York City, and he's talking about buying our couch. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were here to decide whether or not I should go to Paris. I think you should go. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wheeler. So how come you're selling our couch? Oh, I haven't decided if I am yet. Yeah, your mother wanted to think about it because everybody needs a little extra money now and then. Well, this couch has been in our family since before I was born. Honey, since before I was born. 
Ma, what do you think of selling it now? What's happening now that make you change your mind? Nothing's happening now. Except that maybe I'm going to France. This is spending money for me, isn't it, Mama? Oh, Dorothy Jane. Don't you have such an extraordinarily large ego that you think the whole world revolves around you? This is spending money for me, isn't it? Yes. Mother, we have gotten by without money in America, and I will get by without money in France. Dorothy Jane, the dollar is not worth what it used to be in France, and I just want you to maintain your present level of poverty. <laughs> Look, Mr. Wheeler, this cash has been in this family forever, and that's where it's going to stay. Well, Dorothy Jane, I thought you felt this couch was gaudy and loud and embarrassing and didn't suit your sophisticated taste. Well, it doesn't. That doesn't mean I don't love it anyway. Does this mean I don't get the couch? Yeah. <laughs> but I'll take 500 for that poodle painting. <laughs> Forget it. Okay, 50. I'll show myself out. We'll make me an offer. Bye. Okay, 25 for my naked lady lamp, and we'll call it a day. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dorothy Jane. Won't you please come in and meet my family? This is my mother, and these are my brothers and sisters. You know, Oklahoma's got more horses per capita than any other state in the union. I thought that was Texas. Well, you're wrong. Here she comes, here she comes. Oh, please let her run. Oh, please let her go to France. Oh, please, police, police. <laughs> I lost. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, Goofy Jane. Was that my fault? No. My family situation got high marks. They're still talking about my wonderful family. And they seem to like me. Why did you lose? Well, the family in France? Yeah? They wanted a boy. Bonjour, mademoiselle! Kirby! Kirby? Kirby? I will go to Paris someday, Mother. I really will. I'm sure you will, sweetheart. And we'll go with you. Yeah! yeah.